this is probably the most important video or podcast I have done so far. Things have gotten pretty rough. My back is up against the wall. And in this podcast, we're going to break down what I can do, what I'm going to do, and what you can do to help save Breaking Free Skate Park. In this podcast, I'm going to go over why skate parks close, how BFS was different, how things have gotten worse. Uh, we're going to go over a list of skate parks that have closed within the past couple of years. We're going to go over what I have done to combat this, what I'm continuing to do to combat this, and what you can do to help save BFS. So I'm going to jump right in here. Why do skate parks close? I have a couple hypotheses here. Yep. Well, the, the basic thing is that running a skate park is incredibly, incredibly challenging. Okay. You need so much square footage and that's not cheap. And skate parks, frankly, are just not that popular. There are not enough people that skate that really can support paying for 10,000, 20,000 square feet. It's just very challenging in that regard. What I think happens is some skate parks open. People think, oh, that one failed, but I'm going to be different. And they think, oh, I'm going to, it'll be like a normal business where I'm going to bust my butt for three years, five years, whatever it may be. And then once we're up and running, we're good to go. And uh, that seems to not work. <laughs> skate parks typically last three to five years. I think people go into it with the mentality I just spoke of. And then they get burnt out. They're not making money. They're working a lot. And they're like, whatever. I'm done. I leave. I've been around for seven and a quarter years now. So what have I done differently? I have always... Um, what's how much to say this? I have always considered breaking free to be a double bottom line business. What does that mean? There's two bottom lines. There's the dollar sign and then there is the community impact, right? I knew going to, into this, I wasn't going to make a lot of money. I didn't go into it thinking I'd work for a while and then I'd make money. I went into it, frankly, thinking if I could run a skate park, be my own boss, and maybe make 30 grand a year, I could be happy doing that, right? Because it, it's, it's, it's money in, it's money out. You can affect how much money you take in, and you can affect how much money go out, just like how you run the business, how you run your real life. I have built my whole life around the money going out being less than the money going in. It's pretty, pretty simple math, right? And part of the reason I could be content with that is because the double bottom line, the community impact I'm having, talking to my customers, seeing the happiness it brings people, like that is so rewarding, is worth whatever sacrifices I have to make. The other reason BFS has worked, if worked so far is that I can be like five people. It cannot afford, skate, my skate park and skate parks in general, typically cannot afford to pay, you know, a carpenter for the ramp work, you know, a skateboard guy to cover skateboarding stuff, um, a, a digital media guy to do photo and video, a, gra a designer to do your website. The reason I've gotten to where I've been is because I've done everything. I made the sign out front. I built the website. I, I'm there every day almost every day open to close. I do the skateboard lessons. I fix the ramps. Like I do all of it because I'm either dumb enough or crazy enough or smart enough to do all these things. I don't have to pay other people to do it. And it's at, it's at skate parks are so tight that like my furnace had a problem up on the roof. I can't really afford to have someone come in and do it. So like I go up on the roof 
and I've talked to people. I, my brother's HVAC. I asked, what, do I, what am I looking for? What, what am I testing? Get the multimeter out, test this, test that. And then like, if, only when I get my back up against the wall do I ever call someone. And usually then it's I ask customers, hey, do you know someone? Do you know someone? And they come in and they usually help me. And that is part of that double bottom line business. When people know you want to help, they want to help you back. So that's why it's been different. Okay. Now, how have things gotten worse? Okay. This is, this is where everything gets, this has been pretty bright. It's going to get dark. Sorry. In a word, COVID. Obviously, COVID was bad. <laughs> Being closed for several months was bad. Despite having a nice bump in traffic immediately after COVID, or during COVID, I would say, I, I'm sorry, during COVID, as soon as things opened back up, people went back to work, back to school, all those things, everything fell off a cliff. I have a graph to show you here. So this graph on the screen right now is BFS sales monthly. So on the left column, you see it says 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, right? And it starts at January 2020 and goes all the way through last month of February. There is a clear trend here. You can see as it starts, it was a little bit low, basically nothing for two months because that's when I was closed for COVID. Then you'll see this, the summer of COVID was actually by far better than all my previous summers. That winter of uh, 2020, 2021 was, a, was good. That was, that was actually like one of my best years. Like look at this, January, 2021, 47,000 in sales. That's phenomenal. Next January, 33. Next January, 28. Next January, 26. Look at March, 26, 25, 26, and well, this month I'm on track for about 16. So there's been a clear decline in traffic at the skate park since COVID. And this, gra this graph is clear as day. It's going down. It's just down, okay? I took advantage of every COVID grant I could possibly get, which really helped in you know the years following. I did, um, let's see, I did the PPP, the EIDL, the second EIDL, which was supplemental for businesses in low-income neighborhoods. Uh, and I did two grants through Monroe County. So that really, really helped as things were declining. And, and the big decline I've seen has been with little kids. I didn't go through and make a graph like this. I should have. But the skate parks have always been really driven by the, say, 11 to 14, 15 year old after school, they come twice a week, once a week. Those are like my best customers, right? Ever since COVID, the little kids really have stopped coming in that like, say, seven to 11 years old. The, the new kids coming in for the beginner session, hey, is this something I want to do? Maybe I want to skateboard, maybe I want a scooter. With that dropping off, I'm not getting long-term customers and all those chickens are coming home to roost each year with getting less and less people into the sport, less and less people into, into, into the doors. I'm just losing customers. It's frankly, just that's, that's it. I'm still fairly strong in like the 20 to 30 year old skater bracket. Uh, my numbers there have been about where they are, they, 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 where they've always been. In fact, they're probably a little bit higher, but the kids have just dropped off. My Saturday morning beginner session, which was always the busiest time slot of the week, has fallen off a cliff. And I'm running Facebook ads, I'm doing all kinds of stuff, which I guess I'm going to get into in, in, in a minute here. But basically, COVID really messed it up, okay? Uh, on top of that, the economy hasn't been great. So costs have gone up, my bills have gone up. Um, every year, almost every year in business, minimum wage is going up. So I don't really... Even though I do have employees, it's not a huge difference, but every penny counts here. My gas and electric bills have gone up like 40%. I'm paying like $1,000 a month for electric. I'm paying uh, like 
$1,300 a month and heating, it's crazy. So, and, and you're feeling that expense too. So you have a little bit less money. Maybe you're not going to the skate park. I don't know, whatever. Uh, another contributing factor, I believe, is just kids being increasingly less active, being more involved in screens. So whatever happened during COVID and why kids aren't coming back, and maybe it's just an acceleration with their face being in the screens all the time. I don't know. But the sales, the, the graph in front of you shows you everything you need to know that since COVID, I've just been down, down, down. And this is massive. Like this drop here, it's almost half, you know, it's, it's, it's in, like, how can it's a testament to what I've done to have set my overall traffic drop by like 30% and still manage to stay open. But the staying open part is kind of what is kind of why we're here. Okay. I wanted to take a second to look at all these other skate parks that have closed. This is a timber skate shop. Uh, they had a small skate park. They were along the Susquehanna river down in central PA. They closed. I believe this was about two years ago. 50, 50 skate park never reopened from covid i know ed personally he's a great guy i'm from jersey there in staten island he, he's awesome they, you know, they, they never made it out of covid they never even reopened this is a second nature skate park which is on the hudson valley in like just you know kind of down by new york city but up upstate a bit this is a, a smaller skate park it's for sale it's literally on facebook marketplace he had it up for 100 grand now he's dropped it down to 89 grand. Um, I've messaged the guy and talked to the guy. I don't want to sp speak too much about what his situation. He says he, he wants to still do programs and stuff. He just doesn't want to run the park. He didn't explicitly say how bad it was, but there you go. They're probably going to, I don't know if he doesn't sell, he's going to close. I don't know. We all know Rye Airfield back in 2021. Rye Airfield closed. Uh, Buffalo Keyholder Skate Park here out in Buffalo. Um, they're closing April 1st. So this is their last week to, to go ride those ramps. They're gone. And the wheel mill, the wheel mill is a bike park, um, down in Pittsburgh. It's been around for a decade. It's one of only like three facilities, even like that anywhere. And, and they didn't make it either. So it, it's not just me. Also, I didn't even remember Penn skates, Penn skates down in Pennsylvania. Another one didn't make it. Now that's not to say we all have exactly the same scenario, but, but it's kind of uh, interesting that all these skate parks are closing and uh, you know, you, you combine that with what I've seen with my sales and what I've heard from other people that own skate parks that they're seeing the same stuff I'm seeing. So like, what am I supposed to do? That's the next section of this little podcast. Um, what have I done to combat this massive drop? Okay. To give you a little context, I pay about $10,000 a month in rent, 12 months. That's $120,000. My last year, my last full year of sales for 2023, I did not even 200,000 in sales. So you do the math, 120 for rent leaves me about $80,000 total to cover everything else. The insurances, the utilities, my payroll, any sort of maintenance, buying product for the shop, literally everything else. Start adding all those things up, it gets really tight. So what have I done? The, the biggest thing I can personally do to cut costs at the skate park is cut back my pay. And as I said in the beginning of, the skate, uh, of this podcast, my goal was to make about $30,000 a year to do this. And I managed to do that maybe out of two, one or two of the seven years I did that. But ever since COVID, the last three years, I have brought home exact 21,000, 20,000, and 19. Last year, I took home before taxes less than $20,000 a year. You've been in the skate park. You see me there. You see the time I put in. Like this is a labor of love. This is an, I'm not, <laughs> not complaining. I'm, it's just an observation. So the biggest thing I can do to cut costs is literally my pay. 
And I've done that. I've cut my payback 20 to 30%, maybe even more than that, to, to, to combat this, to try to keep the skate park open, right? There is a compounding issue here. I'm ex my wife and I are expecting a child literally this week. So that's going to make it a little bit tougher, you know, to work 100 hours and not get paid, you know? So whatever, I'll digress from that because this isn't about my life. It's really about the skate park. Uh, other things I've done. I've actually got rid of my recycling dumpster at the skate park. Now, don't get your, don't get all upset like I'm not recycling. I am. Uh, there is a cardboard dumpster that the, the landlord provides. And I'm bringing all the cans home and just recycling them personally. So I literally put them in the, in the thing, throw them in my car, drive it home, throw them in my recycling when the recycling, recycling goes out, which is every two weeks, you know. So I'm still recycling. But that saves me. Like, this is how tight things are. It saves me like $60 a month, $80 a month. Cool. I called Spectrum. I was like, hey, lower my bill. <laughs> and, uh, and they did. I got my bill down like 35 bucks. That adds up. Uh, I tried to get my rent lowered. That didn't work. I actually pay a phenomenally good rate. You might think that nearly 10 grand a month in rent is high for how great the space is and where I'm located and what I pay per square foot. I have a phenomenal deal on my rent. So there's not much I could do there. Um, let's see what else I do. I take side jobs. When I get offered side work, I take it. I say yes to everything, whatever thing I can do, you know? Uh, as I said earlier, I, uh, I'm running Facebook ads f for the beginner session, right? I'm running Facebook ads for the bike shop, which is another thing I'm doing. You may have seen it, breaking free bikes alongside breaking free skate park i'm running a bike shop out of the skate park my background is in bikes i ran a bike shop for years before i moved to rochester i used to work at a bike shop in addition to running the skate park because you know need to make money somewhere so i'm growing the bike shop side of things my bike shop does delivery pickup and house calls which is stuff other bike shops do not do again trying to pick up every dollar anywhere i can right and all of these things Take out more time from my personal life, but that's what you have to do. This is what I signed up for. That's not a complaint. It's just an observation. Um, I maintain a bike share company, which means I drive around to all these apartment complexes and I, you know, fix these bikes. So those are all the things I've been doing to, to cut costs and try to get some more income in the business. We're going to get into the second to last section here which is the steps I'm going to take going forward to try to keep this skate park open. My plan was always to get to 10 years, okay? Very few indoor skate parks make 10 years. That's like epic. I'm at seven and a quarter now. I could see the light at the end of the tunnel, which gets me thinking, what the heck do I do once I get to 10 years, right? I don't know. But right now, I'm thinking... Can I hang on? Can I operate at a loss? Can, can, I, can I just get to 10 years? That's the goal, right? That is the goal. So the things I'm going to do, over, effective basically this week or within the next month, to try to continue this battle to keep the skate park open, there's a couple things. One, when I switch to summer hours, I'm going to raise some of the prices. I didn't want to do this. I hate doing this. The price of everything has gone up. I didn't want to be that guy because it sucks. But the sessions are going to go to 20. The all-day passes will still stay at 25 and 30. Based on my previous year attendance, which was still historically very low, that $5 per session difference would make me about $10,000, which is one, one month's rent which is huge, right? At this point, I'm so desperate. I would, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do that. And I've been collecting data on the sign and sheet, asking people, and the majority of people says, say uh, it would not change how frequently they come to the skate park. So whatever. And hey, if things go good, right? If things go well, if my attendance goes back to where it was, I will lower prices again. Because I, my philosophy has always been keep it cheaper, Get people in the door because it, and then you'll tell your friends it's better than raise. I don't want to raise the price. I will take the second to note the prices 
for skate night, bike night, inline night, those things are still going to be 10 bucks. So even the session is going to 20 for regular. If you come in, I'm here for skate night on Tuesday night. It's, it's half price. So we're still going to have those promos. I'm still going to make sure there's, t- there's times during the week you could skate for $10. I'm also going to be adjusting the season monthly passes. I'm actually going to restructure that entirely, but we're we're actually going to go to a whole new thing here. Okay. The skate park is now on, we're on Patreon. Okay. And if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a, it's a, it's a subscription model where people can give you money monthly to support your efforts. Okay. People, Say they want to support sometimes they don't ride anymore, but they want to support me. This is now, this is your chance, okay? If you want to support me, regardless of the season, regardless of where you ride, regardless if you don't skate anymore, we now have the Patreon. The Patreon will be for just people who want to support us outright, as well as we're moving all of the, the, the unlimited riding passes onto this new platform. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over this first, okay? The BFS um, basic support five dollars a month and this is like you just say hey you know what like i could afford to throw bfs five dollars a month thanks for the support right then we have ten dollars a month you can just give us ten dollars a month just to say hey i can afford to give you ten bucks every penny helps it says bfs supporters for people who just want to help the cause maybe your shredding days are behind you maybe you live too far away to support with regular riding ship or maybe you just want to give a little extra 10 bucks. Okay. Then we have the BFS cruiser club. Um, this would be our uh, third tier of support. Uh, this is, you give me $25 a month, you get a free day pass a month. So let's base. So basically it's like, if you're going to come for one day pass a month, you just sign up for this. It is subscription based. So it'll be every month. You'll get your free pass. Easy enough. Then there's the cruiser club plus this is $50 a month. You get two free all day passes which technically all day passes could be 25 or 30. So this could actually, you could actually make money on this. But again, this is subscription model. So this is like, it'll be auto pay every month that goes out. So this will, so maybe you want to support, get those two, two free months, sorry, two free day passes in the winter. In the summer, you might not come, but you say, hey, whatever. I'll, I'll support the skate park in the summer. 50 bucks is about 10, it's $10 a month. So it's really pretty reasonable. Here's some of the new stuff. So we got the shred squad. This will be our, our monthly weekday pass. This would be a monthly charge of $80 and you get a a unlimited riding pass for the weekdays, not weekends. So if you work on weekends, you only skate during the day, 80 bucks a month, put it on the card. You can come skate on any weekdays, right? The, what was our, our previous monthly rate was 150 a month. Now it's dropped to 120 a month. And this is your your month by month unlimited riding pass holder. It's 120. Whole month is covered. If you come uh, you know, more than once a week, this will pay off for you. And then finally, we have the uh the BFS VIP Club. This is our uh the, the ultimate pass, right? This is this is the full thing. So for 150 a month, which is was the previous price for one month, now you get your full unlimited month of riding. You get free labor on your scooter or bike. You get 10% off everything in shop and you get a free shirt when you sign up. This is great for parents with kids. You give me, you give me 150 bucks a month. You could drop your kid off after school every day. If their scooter breaks, I will fix it for free. You will have to pay for the parts, but the labor is free. So if, if their scooter's got a problem, their bike's making a noise, Labor's free. I will fix it for free. You'll get 10% off any of the products. Get a free shirt. That's doesn't get much better than that. Okay. So this is, this is breaking free skate park on Patreon. I'm going to have a link in the, uh, in the description. I'm going to have an Instagram post about this coming out in the week. This is where all our monthly passes are going to go. Other things that I'm going to be doing moving forward. I'm just not going to take any pay. (laughs) Obviously, I'm in a terrible position to do that with a new baby coming. But uh, I'm going to take literally zero pay until I kind of drain any money reserves I have at home. 
and uh, take an absolute bare minimum. Although that's going to be very challenging because my wife will be on paid family leave. And uh, so that covers a little bit, but that's not full pay. So whatever, that's my problem, really not your problem. Um, other possible routes I'm taking here is I may, uh, with my lease being up in August, I may try to reduce square footage of the skate park, which would um, open up me to pay less in rent. So I, I, it's an avenue I might take. My lease is up in August, so I have to figure something out before there. Um, a last ditch effort would be to try to move and downsize the skate park. But I don't know if I can afford to move a skate park and I've moved skate parks and it's a lot of work and it really sucks. And if I'm already like losing money, I don't know where I'd get the money to do that. So, but that's in the back of my mind. I look at spaces, I think about it, I ponder it. So, I don't know. <laughs> I'm doing everything I can, pal. Final section of the skate of this uh, this uh, podcast about the skate park, the skate, let's say BFS skate park. This is the section about what what can you do to help save BFS? What can you do? You at home. Uh, the big thing is please come ride. Like I don't want to have to do all this extra stuff. I would, I would just like to go back to where we were, where we had enough people coming that I could pay the rent, you know? Um, and I used to have enough people come in the winter time that I could pay for the summertime. And I'm not there. Right now, like I'm like in a really bad situation. Like I'm barely have enough month rent rent, barely, barely have enough money to pay rent this month when I should be banking money for the summer. So like, <laughs> it's not good. So if you want to help, come ride. Right. Um. Let's see. You can pick up some merch or some parts. You know, get a BFS sweatshirt. We got coffee mugs. We got some stuff that always helps. If you need uh, parts, you know, you could buy parts from us. That would be helpful. Uh, you can tell as many people with kids. Go try it. There's an ad on Facebook. Half off beginner session. Tell someone, hey, you want to go to the skate park? Just tell them when you get there. You saw the ad half off. Go try it. I need to get kids in the door to just try it. Because you know if they try, you know, if they come try it, they're going to love it. It's awesome. So tell everyone. You could join the Patreon that I just explained uh, and you could support, support us at any, any level you wish. That would be phenomenal for me. Uh, if you need any bike repair work, I'm your guy. I do delivery. I do pickup. Bike repairs. I got you. Not only do I do it faster and better than everyone else, I am cheaper than everyone else. So let me fix your bikes. Uh, you can also tell people about my bike shop, Breaking Free Bikes. Tell them about the bike shop. Tell them about the skate park. Uh, you could tell them about the summer camps. You can share any of our content on on Facebook or Instagram. And be like, hey, like, come go right, check out the skate. A lot of people come in the door. They go, I never knew you existed. Any time, any any way you can help share our stuff, spread the message about it. That is very helpful. The more people that know about me, the more people that can come in. So you can share this video. You can share this podcast. You can share any of our info on social media. A nice, simple, heartfelt post telling everyone what BFS means to you. That would go a really long way. Because places like this, they don't exist and they cannot exist without people or families like me or Ed Polio at 5050 Skate Park. The, there has to be people that are like smart enough or dumb enough or crazy enough to do this, right? I have so many skill sets. It would be so much more financially wise of me to do literally anything else. Anything else. If I close the skate park, I could basically walk into another job and make twice as, as much money. But like I said, this is a double bottom line business. And it's not just about the money. The community impact is a crucial part of what Breaking Free Skate Park is. And I'm not just going to lay down and die. I do everything I can to keep this thing going. I don't want to close. I don't want this to be the last chapter, especially not like this. We go out on my terms. <laughs> my lease is up in August. 
and I need to keep pushing, we got to figure this out. My goal was always 10 years. We've made it seven and a quarter. I would like to tell my landlord I'm going to re-sign my lease to get me to that 10-year mark. If things stay this way, I might not even make it through this year. So we got to do something. <sighs> got to do something. Thanks for listening.